Hello and welcome to Infinity. In recent videos we have gone through how to do a procedural texture version for creating a saturation mask. And in this one we're going to use those formulae and things to put that into a macro. So this is more about doing a macro than about the saturation mask, but we'll show you us using this as well. So first of all we want to get up the macro window here, window and macro there, and I coded in Alt M there for the preferences, the settings. Just hit Control Zero to get that tidily again. And these we only need here is that first rev on start recording, and a little square one next to stop it, and then we'll look at the others afterwards. So we're just going to go first of all and start recording, and then a little technique here you can use because it's going to put in a new layer for the procedural texture. If you've got a big stack of things here and you've got something selected it will put it just above. So it's useful to have it up here right at the very top and you can then drag it to where you want it. So to deselect this I simply go to select and deselect layers. It says that it comes up as clear selection but it's the same thing. Now I can put in my procedural texture. So I just go to live filters here and procedural texture. Now up here is the equations and down here are the sliders and numbers we're going to put in. And don't worry if you've not followed the other videos about this, you can find it just down below. Just scroll down below the window, the video window, and you'll see them there. And just cut and paste them there as we're doing. So the first of all, I'm going to put in the four things I need here. Click on plus and it starts off with red. And you can see because red starts off at zero there, which is why this has got a funny color. If I click plus again, it doesn't put red in again, it just finds the next one, which is green, and then blue, and then the last one is A for alpha, which is transparency. Red, green, and blue are going to be used for the visualization of the mask, and A, A, alpha A is going to be used for the actual mask itself. So, just cutting and pasting these quite quickly, control C from selecting it, and control V, pasting it in here. I've just got in another screen to cut and copy and paste. So I'm going to copy from here and put that into the green. Uh, and you can tell, see, there's a G at the end and then there's a G here. Those should match. And blue. And put that one in there. And then A for alpha. We just copy that one there. Control C and V pasted in there. And nothing has happened here because we need the variables in down here because you can see the A, B, C and so on up here. When there's nothing here, if it doesn't know what to do, if it thinks you've got your, it doesn't understand your macro, it just won't make any change whatsoever, which is usually a bit of a tip. So we've also got the variables from down below. So the first one is minus one to one. That's A, which is the same. A is going to be up here. And we call this stretch and squeeze because that's what it does to the histogram. You can call it anything you want. Then B is the next one. And that's often a, uh, you can put in Z there, but you can also put in an R because you can, an R simply means you can put in a fraction. So I'll just put that in rather than the, the, the Z that I've been using before. So and that's control C. This is stretch boost, which you stick in a number into this and it has a kind of amplifying effect on the mask. So the next one is C is minus one to one again, and that is shift. Control C, and this shifts the, mac the histogram left and right, which again sort of like makes it lighter and darker. And the next two are just switches effectively. This you can have one or zero in them. And if the, you put in something else, uh, then I'm not responsible for what it does. You can force it in to stay at, at Norton 1 using the clamp formula, but I didn't use that just for us, just for simplicity here. And this one here switches between preview and mask. So you can see here, once I've got all the A, B, C, D, E in, it starts to do something. And this is our mask. And up here is the histogram. You can see here, if I say move the shift up here, it would just make the whole thing lighter by shifting the histogram up and down and 
back the other way. And similarly here, if I stretch this one here, then this stretches the histogram and I can squeeze it back the other way. So but leave it on zero and stretch boost is just going to increase the number there and it amplifies the effect up here. So I've got this now. So all I need to do now for the last thing here, by the way, changing this here, nothing changes up here until I go on to something else. So if I click up here, I'll say saturation mask, open brackets, basic, because I might do some other ones as well. And then I'll just select that and control C because I want to copy that because I'm using a minute because this is now about done. So I hit the stop recording here. Then if I want to play it again, and it can be a useful thing to do, I'll right click here and delete that. And I hope this is right because if I click this again, it should replay this. And there you go. It does it just as I want it, including the name in it. And so what I can go here, the next one here, don't hit this one here because it says reset and it will delete everything until you've added it somewhere. You can either add it to the library or you can export it and import it. And that will uh, export will save to a .af macro without an S at the end. AF macros is for the library file. So in here then I will just go to this one you say add to library. There's a whole bunch of categories you can use and these are all the various macros I've written before. Most of them are in the resources section. Again, there's a link down below and I'll just control V paste in that. So which it makes it the same as this here and say OK for that. And this automatically brings up the library here. You can also bring up the library from in the Windows section there. So I'm going to go to the default there and there it is at the bottom. So again, I can right click here, delete that. So it's not there and I just click this one here and it set it up as before. Now then, what I can do with this is I can start playing with it. So let's do something a bit more serious now. And I'm going to go up the stretch boost here. See, it's making it selecting more and more here. So where it's white, it's going to be selected. So any controls you put on it, this is where they'll be applied. So they'll be applied everywhere here, but more in the whiter areas. Then I'm going to go to an invert here because I'm going to I want to select for the monochromes, not for the colors, not the saturated. So I turn that to one and now I've got this here. But now I want to I want to take away a lot of the things down here. I just want it in the monochromes. So I'll turn this thing up a bit more. So only the whites are going to be selected, for example, here. And then I'll use this to make a final correction there, the stretch squeeze just to so working on this, don't worry about what's up here in the histogram, just do that. That's what I want there. Now I'm going to turn this into a mask. So I turn this up to a one and now you can see it's selecting only the bits of the area of the, the photograph there, which are a monochrome, which are desaturated. And then I'm going to put above here, just here, a simple control. This time I'm going to do curves. And then I'm going to drag the saturation mask here onto the little square icon up there. So that is now acting as a mask. And it's a live mask, so it means I can go back and change it again. And now I can play with this. What happens here, if I move this up and down, so you can see there it's affecting areas, but it's mostly affecting the areas of the windows. In fact, I could go back to the mask and tweak it again to make it even more strong. What I'm going to do, right click to get rid of that. I'm going to drag this sideways a bit. Look at the windows going a bit dark. And then I'm going to pull this up again here so that it only applies down in the dark areas. So if I turn this off and on, you can see there, turn it off and on, that it's just making the windows a bit darker, just adding a little bit more contrast. What are the tricks that you can do with this? Anyway, that's it. And thank you very much for watching.